everyone and welcome back got tired of walking up the same way behind pickle and sam welcome back so here we are under a chunk of frame that's missing out of old pickle we're gonna try to get that put in there today i'm gonna try my best i might fail but i'm gonna try my best to make that out of one piece of two by four and if we fail we'll just try again so let me get the camera turned around and get a few things set up and we'll get going on this So that's where we left off. You can see there, not a very big chunk. And right down here on the bottom piece of frame, you can notice that there is a turn there. That same turn existed right here. And what I do is cut off and throw the pieces down in a pile, because you never know. You might need one of those. <laughs> so until I am done with them, they get kicked in the pile behind me. So you can see right about where my thumb is, is kind of where that turn started to happen. So I'm going to do my best, like I said, to make this out of one piece. We're going to draw with some, uh, what am I trying to say here, some cardstock weight paper, make a pattern right here. And then I will actually split along, my plan is to kind of split along, jump down here, the two section, the two inch section. We're just going to split this right on the top and right on the bottom and then we'll cut our pattern up here and then we'll bend that lower piece in to make that curve that's the plan anyway like i said might fail but this is where i'm headed so let me go get a little chunk of that and we're going to just hold it up there and make sure that the piece i'm starting with is going to be long enough and then we'll get some paper and make a pattern so this is the uh, the piece i cut off of the two pieces i used to make the back is it I think it was a 10 foot piece. So on, oops, sorry, on that piece and that piece, this is what I have left over. I have a little bit more. Actually, the other piece might be long enough. Anyway, so we have plenty to work with here. And then I have another uh, 20 foot piece. So we're going to have plenty of this material to make that. I apologize for the wind. We're probably going to get a little bit of wind noise. It's Probably got about 15 mile an hour winds whipping through. It's perfect sailing weather. <laughs> and I'm out here working on this bus instead of spending time on the boat. But probably going to get just a little bit of wind noise today. I've gone in and just cut a strip of cardboard and attached it there so we can kind of get where our shape is going to be. And I went and looked at my... I'm trying to see if I can line that up. It's pretty close. You can see lining it up with that one below it. The only point... I see a problem is right here and we can change that. The curve is kind of what I'm going for. I went and looked at my double cab just to make sure I was if this was a sweeping curve or if it was more of a sharp angle but I think I've got it pretty close so I'm gonna use what I've got there. We can always kind of tweak it just a little bit but I'm basically just trying to get this pattern up on top and without this edge I can't really get that very well so that's why I did that. That looks good. I mean, who's going to notice, right? Well, here's what I came up with for that piece. Got a little uh, little scissor happy there at the edge, but we know that's 4x4 uh, four four there. Oops. Everything else looks like it's lining up pretty good. I think it might be a little bit fat right here as far as how, how far we are this way. We'll know here in a second when I throw it on a piece of... Uh, two by four steel and see how that looks. So I'm gonna double check and make sure that that fits the bottom side. I tried to cut them so that they were pretty even with each other. So when I went to make the panel, I could pretty much just make it the same. So I'll make sure that fits down there and we'll go trace this on some metal and see what kind of mess we can make. It's probably kind of hard for you to see, but I've drawn with a Sharpie marker, traced my pattern and the backside was slightly different. So I just went ahead and made a different pattern for it. And then that's how far it's off. And then trace it onto here. And we've lined up our little notch there. And the piece onto the back. Let me go put this in the bandsaw. We'll cut here. And then I'm going to have to probably cut this by hand with a cutoff wheel. I was going to use uh, the bandsaw and just cut it a mirror image of itself. But since the two pieces, the two halves are slightly different, we'll just cut it by hand. It's not that much cutting there. 
So let me go uh, get that cut and we'll bring it back and see how it fits. Well, here's the piece I have managed to kind of get the rough cut in. I managed to cut almost all of it on the bandsaw. I went back in with one of these uh, Linux uh, cutoff wheels. These are a diamond coated tip or blade. They cut a little bit fatter than I prefer normally, but coming down into this uh, groove you know, can sit on the side with rust better. I wanted to make it a little bit fatter so that when I go to turn that piece up, I've got a little bit of area to work with there. So why don't we take this out and uh, see how it fits. Obviously, when you cut a piece of 2x4 apart, it wants to kind of pop away. But we're going to be welding uh, this to the bus, and then that piece that's down there is going to curve up, curve up this way and get welded. So we won't have that issue to deal with later. It's just kind of one right now. So let's take this out there and uh, see what kind of damage we did to that piece that was unnecessary. <laughs> I hope we're close. Should have played hopscotch on the way since Mr. D drew me a hopscotch path. Let's see here. Hey, that's not terrible. That is not bad. Got a little bit of hitting right up there. Need to knock that out. And then it looks like we're a little long in the tooth right there on the top side. Leave the bottom alone. Boy, that's close. The bottom is... Uh, may have to peel that. Oh, it feels good. Man, did we hit it on the first try? <laughs> no way. No way. That never happens. And never on camera. You always have to repeat it on camera. Okay, let me go notch out. You just need to notch out that little piece there at the top. And then I think we might actually be able to kind of start fitting that up. Sweet. In this case, first time's a charm. Just out here, uh, kind of shaping that grinding some areas down and my neighbors stopped by to say hi they're all just a bunch of turkeys hmm <laughs> I don't know how many are there I didn't count them there's a lot though just stopped in to say hello didn't think like they were bothered at all by me out here cutting you're used to it I guess so I've kind of just fine-tuned that I'm going to match it on this corner, this edge up here, because this piece, I welded my bracket on and I didn't realize this piece was kind of towed in a little bit down here. This is just C-channel, and we're putting the square in. So I think I'm pretty straight up there. This top piece uh, was straight. So what I'll do is I'll weld till we get about right. I'll probably stop about right here, and then I'll cut my brace, and we'll pull this out and weld it. Wish I'd have realized that, but it is what it is. Easy to fix, no big deal. So that fits pretty well. I decided to go ahead and leave this since that's where that makes that turn. And I'll hammer that down so it's flush. And then this does pop down in there. That looks pretty good. I think I'm pretty well ready now. We've got that piece all kind of popped it out a little bit there but it fits really snug but kind of start working on making the rounded up the bottom fits good too it's just like this does so I think just maybe start kind of trying to work that up uh, it looks like we might be a little bit proud on that side there 
which my original line was up a little further, so I'll probably have to trim trim this a little bit. I think the bottom side's good because it drops in a little bit. I cut them the same uh, on the can't think on the bandsaw, but for whatever reason, it lines up better on the bottom side. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna start working on this, and I'm gonna go first go and just kind of sand or uh, flapper disc this and get it down just a little bit because you can see where the bend is on the original frame. We're just past that, and we're gonna be adding this piece on, so we probably should be about flush for the end of my little accidental grind mark is right there. Oops. So we'll try to cut this piece back to that. And I think we've got it. It wasn't that bad to make, actually. Can't believe I hit it on the first try, though. Yeah. So we'll start working that around. I had to kind of go in and trim up, like I had said before, this piece here, so that when I fold this piece up, this actually marries or matches the bend that was in the original uh, framing. But I think I got the curve about right when those are together. And I pushed down on that and kind of forced that in a little bit. I need just a little bit more. I think we've about got it. I need to nick this piece off and I'm gonna cut it a little bit proud because when it actually comes up we're gonna lose some length but it is definitely too long about a quarter inch too long so let me trim that and then I'm gonna go back out and fit it and make sure we're good to go and then I'll go ahead and uh, patch it or sorry and I'll go ahead and weld tack this all up and we'll take it out there for a fit but I think I think it fits pretty well way better than I thought it would so, yeah, let's cut that off and we'll tack it up and see what it looks like. Well, I got it pretty much where I'm happy with it enough to tack it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'll work on this curve a little bit more from the inside and try to get that transition to be just a little bit smoother there. If you just push down on the metal after you've cut it and you don't kind of do like I did with the hammer and ping around some rod or something, it just wants to crimp right here. So it just folds straight and it really doesn't make a curve. So I've tried to kind of make it, get in the shadow, but I've tried to kind of make it curve around and I'll work on it a little bit more. It won't take much more to get it uh, where it needs to be, but we're losing daylight. Uh, for tonight, anyway. I know it won't matter for y'all, because you'll get to see it here in just a few seconds, but... Got a... Almost a full moon. Can't get her to focus there, but... Give us moon? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's pretty. So, we'll pick back up tomorrow and get that piece in the bus. How about that carport, though? It's like daylight out here. I could continue to work if I didn't have to get the little guy in bed. Isn't that awesome? I love it.
I've come up with as a just as a practice run here. We'll go see what we can come up with as far as fitment. Looks like it's still a little bit long right there. So we'll cut that off. This piece in the back is cut further in, so I think that one's okay. Let's go see uh, see what it fits like. It may be totally wrong, but we're going to try it. Let's see what we get. It's just a couple days later, and the temperature is about... Oh, 25 degrees different than it was when we were out here filming the last time. A little chilly. Welcome to Indiana in the fall. My favorite time of year. Let me get the camera set up and we'll put that piece in and see what we got. Hopefully you can kind of see all of it from there. Looks like I might need to take a pair of pliers and straighten that out just a little bit more. It's pretty good, but there's a little spot right there I need to kind of bend back out so it's straight. Yeah, we're just a little bit long. I'm going to have to go cut that. I'll show you here. Hang on. So we're hitting right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but let me go cut that little piece off and we'll try it again. You know, I just don't want to cut it off twice and it still be too short, so I always error or try to error on the side that it's too big. Alright, so I just cut, pretty much made that even focus with uh, the top piece there. get a hammer and give that some gentle persuasion and get that in there and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, I've played around with it a little bit and I'm pretty happy with how that's fitting in there. This very end, I broke the weld here because that needs to come in a little bit. You can see I need to, it needs to push in all the way flush pretty much with the piece it's going to be welded to. And the only way I can get it to sit there without falling is to put just a little bit of twist right here. So when I weld it, I'll straighten that out. But I think that looks okay. So I'll crawl underneath there and double check the back side, but I think it's good. I checked it the last time, so I think that that looks okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and squirrels, here's what I've come up with for our part. I think uh, I think that'll do us just fine. Why don't we take it out there? Just make sure it still fits. That would that would stink. <laughs> that would stink, wouldn't it? Take it out there and it doesn't fit. Yeah. Let's take it out. Make sure we still got a good fit, and we'll be ready to roll that sucker in. Whoop! Sorry. Hopefully it still fits okay. I kind of towed in this back piece just a little bit because the area that's behind it is not exactly two by four right there. It kind of starts to taper uh, because they used the lip to weld that back piece too and we're hanging just a little bit past it. So I just kind of took this piece and just kind of bent it in a little bit. So it's not exact two by four. You can see how it kind of turns in. But it lines up, makes it line up really nice on the back side. We hope, we hope it still lines up. Yeah, I'd say that's as perfect a fit as I can get in this shop. Bring you over here where you can take a peek. 
and obviously we'll tack it and then adjust it and then tack it and adjust it before we weld it, permanent weld it in. That looks pretty nice. And those line up really well right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And again, I mentioned before that piece is not lined up because this is bent in. So I'll just bend that out, make it line up. Yep, that's good. I like it. And at first it kind of was an optical illusion. It looked like this kind of bent in a little bit, but it's flush. I think that'll do nicely. I will, uh, and it's kicked out just a little bit right there, so that needs to be tipped in. You can see when I, I if I tip it too far, the magnets will drop, but tip that back a little bit and that'll line up right there. Perfect. Well, almost. I'm going to spare you the details of welding that in. You've seen me do that before, so uh, the next episode we'll have that piece all welded in and we'll be jumping up here to work on uh, this piece and work our way back to this point. And that we're not going to touch right now. I'm going to get everything else solid on the frame on both sides and then we'll worry about uh, where the front beam bolts up. That'll be the last thing we fix. But I have a little something it has been kicking around in my brain and I want to show you inside that I, I hopefully I think it'll work out. Let's go. Let's go see what we're doing here. So you took the gas door off the bus and I do not have a church key. They call it a church key. Uh, it's kind of shaped like something we all have seen at some point. It's a tapered square. So you know where I'm going with this. Some of you are following along. Looks kind of like one of those. At least to me it did. So this was a little bit longer. I filed ground the end of it off so it would go in there and fit snug. And I had someone offer, the kind offer, of giving me a church key. And although I am extremely appreciative of that, I think we're going to make our own. Because all I need to do basically is make this a T-handle so that we can operate it. And it, the grooves fit in my fingers perfect. So I think We'll use that to make a church key. So let me go heat this up and see if we can kind of bend that around and make it turn that keyhole. Yeah, I think I need to perfect it just a little bit, but it works. It works actually really well. I can't believe that thing turns, but it does. And there's a little spot inside the bus on the driver's side, kind of where the defrost vent is. For those of you who don't know, my 67 doesn't have one because they stopped doing it. But it sits in a little pocket that's there. So I may have to turn, see how I'm not straight to my handle. I think that looks kind of cool. I think if I need, I need to t turn it up just a little bit right there. I might be able to fix this one. And then I cut the sharp point off and just rounded that with the grinder. I like that. It actually moves it really easily. Nice. There's a reason I keep junk parts kicking around. I buy these at auctions by the bucket full they work really well in art pieces and we can make church keys out of them who knew yeah, i thought when we kind of had this gas door out you go ahead and take it down to original w paint so i've taken the latch off and it was chrome originally there should be i think there's a little door that goes over this maybe i'm wrong somebody will know i've never had a bus this old so i think there's a little door that goes over that I'm not sure about that. Anyway, uh, I've taken the latch off. And there's a little rubber seal. Not very rubbery anymore. 
behind that and peeking from behind is the dub blue so let's see what kind of damage we can do to get that back like it should be oh and it has a big dent I don't know if you can see how dished in that is or not. Probably because the hinge rusted and they tried to open it with the hinge not moving and it bent right there. So we'll try and bang that out too. Did I go too far? Might have gone too far a little bit. Looks pretty good. Looks like there's a little twist in it right here, but that might be an optical illusion because it switches the blue paint right there. Yeah, we're going to live with that for now. Got that bow out of it. Didn't take very much. Stuff's paper thin. Alright, let's get that paint off of there. So I'm going to use Goof Off. This is the one I'm using. The one that says graffiti in graffiti. So that's the one I'm using. They make a couple different ones and that's the one that I have found works the best. Uh, always do it in a well ventilated area though. And I'm, I wear gloves. But it works pretty well. It'll take several different coats of it to get the seven layers of paint off of this thing. But it does take the paint off. I did the one whole uh, driver's side of the bus. You can go check that out. I'll put a link here. And I haven't done the other side yet. So I'll keep working on that and uh, I'll bring you back and get it all scraped off of there. Black layer is almost off. All right, only six more layers to go. <sighs> That's the carnage of what I took off. Pretty nasty. Well, I got that all cleaned up as much as I'm gonna clean it up right now anyway. And I took the, uh, the locking mechanism off of there and kind of wire wheeled it. And it came back really nice. And the little uh, catch, the little uh, metal tab that catches, uh, has the VW stamp and a part number, you can see. And it was bent like somebody pried it open with a screwdriver or something at one, one point, and so I just flattened it out. But it came back really nice. I'm really, I think that'll do just fine for what we need it to do. Certainly for this bus. Uh, and then the front, I went ahead and Stripped all the layers of paint off of that chrome as well. So that came back really well. Again, I think it had a little teardrop shaped door right here. I could be misremembering that, but this little tab that's sticking up makes me think I'm right. I think there was a little door that went here. Ah, one of you will know. Uh, I did notice over here there's a little stamp that says SW in a heart. So... Clearly uh, somebody who made these hinges. I don't know what that actually stands for, but it's some kind of manufacturer that made parts for Volkswagen. And then here's what the overall door looks like after I stripped all the paint off. So you can see where the crease was, where it was dipped in before, but it is straight now. So it looks pretty good. I just wish that line wasn't there, but yeah, that wasn't my doing. Somebody had already crimped that before, long before I got it, but I'm happy with that. I think that'll do just fine. There's a few little places along the edges where I need to go in and kind of clean that up a little bit more, but got to be careful on the edges because you take it down to <laughs> take it down to bare metal real quick. So that looks pretty good, and I love the patina on the back, the original paint. If I take a little bit of steel wool or a, a scotch bright pad to that, I can probably bring that all the way back to blue. I'm not overly concerned about that being kind of greenish right now. And then I oiled the hinge. Works really good now. And my church key. Now, I am not certain I'm going to keep this. I'm not totally in love with the shape I've made. Uh, but that's what I came up with. And it's okay. We 
proof of concept. We know it goes in the lock. We know it turns the lock. So I, I think if I kind of tweak with it just a little bit more, we might actually have something that doesn't maybe look like a candy cane. <laughs> the original one made a complete loop and it, it was kind of an elongated loop so your hand could go in it. But it works and it, it looks kind of cool. It's a start anyway. Dropped a little oil in there. Like butter. Nice. All right, with that, everyone, I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. We're going to have a, uh, a pretty cool moon tonight, though. Did you check out the moon? Yeah. Take a picture of this. Take a picture of that. Are you going to fly in on your broom? It is getting close to Halloween. Hey. No? Take a picture of this. I got gotcha. you. What's that face? Just take a picture. <laughs> is that your best Halloween face? Got it. Okay, let me see it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one? Scarecrow Dalton? Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Uh -huh.